Hello everyone, I'm Jaden from Gummy Bear Robotics, and in today's video, I will go over the basics of block coding to get you a better understanding of the concept and what blocks do. Later, I'll introduce the first two sections, light and sound, and I'll tell you the functions that they have for the Spike Prime robot. So first, with, for an outline of our video, um, to start off, I will give an overview and introduce what block coding actually is and talk about late and then I will talk about all the different blocks that Spike Prime provides. After that, I will um, teach you how to set up the Spike Prime app more in depth. Um, and I will also go over the various controls and functions of the Spike Prime hub. Uh, lastly, I will talk about the light and sound blocks, which we'll use to do some exercises. So in our tutorial series, we will be using block coding in order to program the Spike Prime robot. So before we dive into programming, let's get familiar with what it exactly is. So Spike Prime's block coding is based off Scratch, a programming website you may have heard or used before, and it is the default programming method used for the robot. It is a simple and heavily visually based experience where colorful blocks represent coding instructions. And then by using a drag and drop interface um, to can attach a combination of blocks, you can execute a series of commands that the Spike Prime robot will follow. Um, then each of these blocks can also be customized to change what it exactly does. Um, like in the example in the bottom right corner with the movement block, you can change the direction you program the robot to move in, as well as how much rotations you want each wheel to go. Um, this overall is a much easier system, which makes it more appealing for students new to robotics and coding. And when compared to Python, it is a lot uh, less complicated as Python uses lines of text set of blocks and requires extensive programming logic and specific syntax. All right, now that we know what block coding is, let's talk about the different block types that are available for programming the Spike Prime robot. So in total, there's 10 sections available in your programming workspace, and you can access all of them in the far left menu of your workspace. And each of the sections will be given a corresponding color, which is listed out below. So the first section, blue, um, stands for motors and it contains all the blocks that uh, control and run individual motors. And this can be used to program attachments um, that are only attached to single motors. Um, the pink section, which is labeled the movement, works similarly to the motor blocks, except that they control uh, two motors at the same time, which you have to configure. And this oftentimes is used to drive the robot. And next, the dark purple and light purple sections, light and sound, uh, control the light matrix, which is located on the Spike Prime hub, and can play sounds on either the robot or the computer. Uh, next, event blocks, which are in the yellow section, trigger the blocks attached below it when the program starts or another condition is met. Um, the orange section, control blocks, on the other hand, can pause the program with wait blocks or uh, can loop the blocks inside a loop command, uh, which can simplify your programming. Um, the light blue blocks uh, hold sensor values, like the jar angle or the color sensed, uh, and this can be used for a lot of conditions and interacting with the environment. Uh, act, and when it's paired with the operator, which is the next section, which is uh, green, it can create uh, conditions to be set based on the sensor values, and this can be very helpful. Uh, the next one, variables, which are in the dark orange section, can store values and manipulate them throughout the program. And the last section, my blocks, are custom blocks that uh, users will make. And this can allow for advanced functions to be simplified into a single my block. And just a note, this was only a brief introduction to all the blocks. And in, eventually in our tutorial series, we will go deeper into all of the blocks. So uh, now to talk about the setup and downloading of the Spike Prime Education app. Um, to get this, you can click on the link that's in the screen, and we can also provide it in the description. Uh, so you want to download the version that is using your OS. So if you're using a MacBook, that would be Mac OS, or if you're using a Windows, that would be Windows 10 or 11. And you can follow the um, instructions to install it on your computer. So after you install it, a Spike Prime app should show on your um, desktop, and which is shown in the very right screenshot. And you can double click it to start your programming journey. 
So once you launch the Spike Prime Education app, make sure um, to select Spike Prime as your coding platform. And after that, to create a new project, you can click on the plus sign and make sure you select block coding uh, to have the right programming language. And once your project workspace is open, you the first step is to connect to your hub. And what you have to do is you click on the brick icon in the, uh, in the top left of your workspace. And you can either connect through USB or Bluetooth um, to uh, connect your robot. And if you're doing Bluetooth, you can follow the instructions um, that will be shown in the animation after you click on the icon. So uh, this will be your project workspace, and there's a lot of different buttons uh, to that you can use. And the first one is in the top left, very top left, which is the home button. And this will basically bring you back to the home screen. There's also a bar that shows all the open projects that you have. And then the far right, you can click on the plus sign to make a new project. Uh, additionally, in each tab or project, there's also a three dots icon, and you can use this to change the properties of the project, like move the file or um, save as a different location. Um, in the bottom right, there is a pixelated uh, number, and this will allow uh, that will show the uh, number that is saved on your Spike Prime Hub. It would either be zero, one, or two, et cetera. And you can use that to um, find where the project would be saved if you download it to the robot. And the next two buttons to the right of that are the run and stop buttons. And these basically uh, run or stop the project. Uh, this will also download the project to your robot when you click run. Um, so if you don't want to create a new project every time, you can also open an existing one if you saved it. And you can do this by using the file menu and you can uh, click open to open a project and select the file that you want. So now let's move on to the hub. The hub is what powers the robust motors and sensors which have to be connected to it and it also stores the programs that you make. And in order to use the hub, you have to first understand the four buttons and how to use them. So as you can see, there are three types of buttons with the first one being a rounded button at the bottom center. And what this does is it turns on and off the hub if you hold it for three seconds and it is used to select and run programs with a short click. Um, the buttons to the left and right of it are used to navigate the programs, which will be labeled by the LED on the light matrix, which will display a number. Um, the fourth button is the Bluetooth button, and this uh, will turn on Bluetooth, uh, which you can use to connect to your computer and program the robot wirelessly. So now that we've gone over all the basics, we can finally talk about our first section, which will be light blocks. So light blocks will be found in the dark purple section, and here are all of them. So each will have a different function, uh, but most of them will control the five by five LED light matrix, which is located in the center of your Spike Prime Hub. And it is looks like um, the one in the top right image. So um, here's some functions for all the light blocks. Uh, so the first two, they will display a design they can either select from the ones available or uh, one that you made by yourself. So you can create your own by using the screen um, you see at the bottom right image. And here you can select individual pixels to either turn on or off um, at the position that you clicked. Uh, you can then change the brightness of each LED uh, with the bar at the right. And next, there is an option to display the text uh, that you input into the block. And this will show the letter on the matrix in a sideways water file style. So one letter after the other. Um, and it's also a block that you can use to directly change the brightness of a specific LED based on the X, Y coordinate given um, instead of using the menu to change the brightness. Uh, there are also other various blocks that change the appearance of the matrix, such as uh, rotating it 
for sending the uh, orientation. And you can play with all of these later uh, and test on your own. So now for our first program, um, you can create a new program inside of your uh, education app. And here are the blocks that you will need. So first, you can place a start block, which is found in the event. And um, what it does is it basically runs all the blocks that are attached below it uh, when the program starts or when you click the the arrow button at the bottom right of your program workspace. After that, you want to place a turn on and then have the design, uh, which is in the light section. And this will basically either turn on the default, which is a smiley face, or you can feel free to change it to a different one or actually make one by yourself. Uh, after that, you can place a weight block, which is found in the control section. And what this do does is it will pause your program for one second um, and before continuing to the next block, uh, which will be the turn off pixels. This will basically turn off the, all the pixels uh, on your light matrix. After that, you can wait another second and finally put on another turn on display block uh, from the light section. And this time try to use a different pattern. Uh, also like it's uh, pretty fun to create your own design. So feel free to do that. And once you finish programming this and run the program on your robot, it should show one design uh, after a second, it will turn off the pixels. And after another second, it will show another design. All right, now for the next session section that we will dive into. So these are all the sound blocks and it can be found in the light purple section. So these blocks will either program the speakers in your SpyCrime hub or the speakers inside your laptop. And this will play uh, different sounds. So similarly to the light matrix, this can be pretty useful as um, it can be a, as well as being a fun addition to your programs, it can also indicate the statuses when your robot is being run. So here are some of the block functions. Um, the first two blocks will play a sound that you can select in the menu. And uh, note that these sounds will play on your laptop, not your spike crime hub. So make sure that your sound is up if you want to hear them. Um, the difference is basically the sounds have a, a specific length. And if you just want to play it once, you can use the first block. But if you want to keep on playing it, you can use the second block. So um, after that, there is a beep block, which is um, going to be run on your Spike Prime Hub. And you can change the frequency as well as how long it will be played. Um, there's some other blocks that are uh, also filters, like the pitch effect, which is by default. And you can change these to change all the sounds. Uh, these effects will also be uh, stay during the entire program unless being changed later on. So um, there is also a blocks that can uh, clear all the sound effects as well as change the volume as you see down below. Great, now that we learned all about the sound blocks, we can try them in another exercise. So first, what you want to do is um, place find a play sound button. Um, of course, you will have to put this under a when program starts block, which is found in the events section. Um, and you can change the cat meow, which is default to another one of your choice, or you can leave it as just the cat meow. Um, this will play the sound on your laptop. So make sure that your sound is up. After that, you can place three beat blocks um, and you can set the frequency to the example of 60, 80, then 100 and have them each be played for one second. And essentially what this will do, will first play this uh, cat meow um, on your laptop and until it's done, it won't move on. But once it's finished, it will start playing um, a ascending beep. Uh, so one of the other, and each one will last for one second uh, playing on the spike prime hub. And once you've tried uh, work playing around, you can change some of the frequencies or the sounds to see what happens. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I uh, hope you enjoyed um, using all the knowledge you learned in these two exercises. So 
If you want to be notified about when we post more in-depth videos about programming FLL robots, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach us through our email, which is shown on the screen.